I have no idea how this thing is going to sound. Welcome back to my build video of my classical guitar. It's day number three here, and I walk in a tiny bit late, and everybody's already begun. And as you can see, they're routing the back and front to the sides now, and even some of them are moving on to the stage of binding. I begin with sanding the faceplate of the headstock before moving on to try to catch up with them by getting the sides aligned with the face. Since you already saw me do this and describe the process in part one of the build series, instead I'd like to talk about what kind of influence my design decisions might have had on the acoustics of the instrument. But it's kind of like a drum here and the bridge is sitting right here in the middle like where you hit the drum right in the middle. But then it begs the question, what are these doing to the sound then? And then if these aren't influencing it, would a cutaway there influence it? I really don't know. I have no idea how this thing is going to sound. And frankly, I don't really care all that much. I'm going to install a piezo pickup in the bridge. And <laughs> so what the acoustic properties of it are kind of lacking, I think it will be made up for with the piezo. Yeah, the topic of acoustics is quite huge, so we won't get into all the nitty-gritty details, but uh, suffice it to say that the vibration of the springs on the saddle will definitely induce a response in the piezo pickup. So what I'm doing here is trying to get the sides lined up with the back of the neck. Uh, I'm using this board here that matches the exact curvature of the bracing on the back of the guitar and finding out that I cut the sides down a little bit too much so now I have to adjust the height of the neck. <laughs> and once I finally got the sides fixed in the slots there in the neck I realized that Oops, I had actually cut all of the little channels for the bracing in the wrong position. So now I have to fill the slots with these little spacers and reposition the cutouts. And finally, it's time to glue the bridge to the face of the guitar. We decided to do that now because the guitar body is a bit too thin to fit clamps comfortably inside. So if we do it now, we can clamp uh, from both sides easily. So here, he's helping me position the bridge correctly. Uh, so it's got the right scale length, uh, but something I think we may not have realized was right in this moment, we may have accidentally pushed it off to the side a little too much. Here I'm making a template for the routing of the armrest that I'm going to do a bit later. But first, let's get this box put together. And with that, I am finally at the stage that everybody else was at the day before. So I'm still exactly a day behind everyone. Uh, no. <laughs> and here's the stage that everyone else is at at the end of day three. They're <laughs> 
getting really close to finishing. Here's what my guitar looks like at the end of day three. So my day four began just like everyone else's day three, I'm trying to match the front and the back to the sides. And here I am trimming the front and the back to the neck, basically doing the hard to reach areas with the router by hand. Wolfgang is telling me how to properly route this. Going with the grain, keeping the guitar body parallel, everything like that. The other participants of the course had an easier time with this, I must add, because as you can see, I'm holding the guitar in the air, whereas they were able to put the face of the guitar straight on the on the uh, on the steel table, so they had a, a perfect 90 degree reference. I wasn't able to do this because I glued the bridge on the day before. So I had a big bump on the face of the guitar, keeping me from being able to lay it down on this table. <laughs> this was just too nerve wracking for me, so I just let him do it. <laughs> but one thing I did want to do that was different than the, the other participants is I was the only one that wanted to freehand route this finding channel. It was, uh, it was a bit tricky because you only have one go here. You're not allowed to go backwards. You're only allowed to go forward one time uh, because if you go backwards then the channel could get too loose for the binding. Okay. The music you just heard, if you want to call it music, sorry for that. <laughs> it's my playing. Yeah, this is what the sound of this guitar is. I'm using both an external mic and the internal 
mic piezo system. I'm mixing them together so you have kind of a full bodied idea of what the guitar sounds like. This part was quite amusing because he had also never done an armrest on a, an acoustic guitar before, so neither one of us knew what the hell we were doing. <laughs> an die Unterkante, ne? Ja, weil wir hier das Schräge kriegen. Und hier, da ja, kriege ich das auch. Ne? Also ich kann eigentlich auch nicht. Es, bleibt, es, bleibt, es bleibt der äh, weiße Rand stehen vom Schwarzen. And what you hear there is another course participant's guitar. Let's go check it out. So at the end of the fourth day, one participant had already gone home while I was gluing the fretboard to the neck and before everybody else was ready to go home I suggested let's take a group photo. Here are the other participants with their completed guitars and Wolfgang Teller, the instructor of the course. <laughs> Yeah. 
while the instructor of the course did do some preparation on the neck, uh, it surprises me how much extra work I kept doing on the neck. I went back to it uh, so many days. Um, <laughs> Here we have it, a uh, guitar at home next to my small-bodied acoustic here. It's not a jumbo guitar. And you can see how small this one is next to it. So here the red lines are simulating the strings, and you can see the high E is drifting off the fretboard there. And that's a problem, and there's only one solution. Using water and heat, we worked the bridge free, and then I went back and did some final touches before having to glue the bridge back on. talked to Wolfgang about it and he advised that you could go ahead and tape over uh, the location of where you want the bridge to be and apply the finish. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm aligning everything, figuring out exactly where I want it to go so that I can trace it out and then I'm going to put the tape down and cut the exact form out so that the tape protects the glued surface. And for some reason, I understood that you were supposed to apply a sanding sealer if you're going to use shellac. So that's what I'm doing here. But then I go and I sand it back completely later.
And it felt really good to get the strings on it finally. And then do the finishing touches of setting the action by adjusting the nut and saddle heights. And after investing at least 80 hours building this guitar, I finally got to hear what it sounds like, and I was quite pleased. Um, you got to hear what the mixture sounded like of the piezo pickup uh, coupled with an external microphone in the previous sound examples, but you haven't heard what it sounds like yet, just completely acoustic. So that's what you're going to hear now recorded with the same external mic and the microphone on the camera with no signal processing. <laughs> 